welcome to part four of our overlanding build series we actually just finished our cargo area and we're gonna be moving on to doing our electrical system so we're gonna start off first by just showing the battery putting it where we're gonna be placing it inside of the car and then creating a case around it so let's get started with that first All right, so oh my God. this is our 200 amp hour Renogy battery. It's 127 pounds. This is our auxiliary battery. So this is what we're gonna be using on the trip, basically to charge everything. We're gonna use solar to recharge this battery. We're also gonna be installing a DC, DC to DC charger, which connects this to the starter battery. The first thing that we're gonna do actually is create a little cubby area just right around this. not going nowhere. One. And two. Our battery box has been made. Now that we built the area that we're gonna be putting the battery in, we're gonna assemble all the different components. I'll show you all the things that we have, so let's start with that. Here are all the items we used for the build. We have a 200 watt Renogy portable solar suitcase, a Renogy DC to DC 20 amp charger, a battery monitor, 500 watt inverter, USB and 12 volt sockets plus 12 gauge wire, emergency on and off switch, 6 gauge wire and connectors, MC4 and SAE connector, fuses, multimeter, crimper and wire stripper, heat shrink wire connectors, heat gun, and a ratchet. If you're interested, we placed links to all of the items in the description below. So I'm gonna show you just the basic of what I'm gonna be doing during this whole process, which is making connections. You're gonna need, obviously, a wire stripper and a crimper, because you have to cut the wires and you have to put a specific size of these like ring holes based on what your battery is, and if you get one of these sets over here, it'll tell you like what gauge wire and which one you're gonna probably be needing. So I'm gonna just cut this wire and then I'm gonna put it right in there and it strips the wire. I'm gonna grab the connection twist, put it in there, grab the crimper and then squeeze. And then you could use a lighter, but we got a really cheap $10 heat gun. And now we have a connection. Right, guys so it's a new day and we've pretty much wired as much of the electronics that we can but now today's project is actually making a little storage area where all of this is going to be kind of hidden and now it's good We just put the wood glue down on this and now we're gonna just drill it in just so it has a little bit more of a tighter hold. All right, so once I get all of the electrical in there, set it up, connect it, then I'll take you through step-by-step step what each one does. And yeah, exciting. It's 
connected. Everything's connected. So here it is, guys. It it took us a long time to get everything put together. It's right here. It's reading it. All right, once the sun comes up tomorrow, we will run you through everything. <laughs> I've I trusted and believe in John, but you know, you never know. Oh, this know. is safety right yeah, here. Yeah, I was walking around with this. <laughs> but everything worked out, yeah. All right guys, so we finished the electrical. This was by far my favorite part of the whole build. I enjoy even how the box came out. It has a nice rustic look to it. But before we talk about what's inside of the box, let's go to the front of the car and talk about what's under the hood. All right, so one of the ways that we need to get the auxiliary battery to charge is by connecting it directly to the starter battery. So we're using a DC to DC charger for that. DC meaning direct current. What we've done is connected six gauge wire, a positive and a negative. And on the positive lead, we have a 30 amp fuse. So this fuse is just in case there's just too much power coming in, this will protect uh, the circuit and not cause a fire or overcharge any of the components in the back. From there, we put the wires through a firewall through the car and then we ran it all the way underneath to the back. So from there, the two wires will lead up here. The positive wire goes into this emergency on and off switch. Just in case there's any problems, we could just turn it all off. The negative lead will go inside the box and then the positive end from the emergency switch will go inside the box. Right here is our battery monitor, which I'll explain a little bit more when we get inside the box. And this is an SAE connector, so this is where our solar panel is gonna connect. On the top over here is an inverter. What an inverter basically does, it converts DC power into AC power so that you could plug in your laptops, um, anything that has just one of these AC outlets. It also comes with two USBs, so if you wanna you know, charge more items with USB, you could do that. This is also a 500 watt inverter. We're gonna eventually do a review on this, but that's what this is for. Outside here, you have your USB socket, a 12 volt socket, and then another 12 volt socket. This 12 volt socket is gonna connect directly to the fridge, and these are just gonna be used to connect our phones, batteries, etc. So let's go inside the box and show you all this beautiful wire set up in here and try to explain it all. So we'll start off with the DC to DC charger. Like I said, the positive lead of the emergency switch goes here, and then the negative from the starter battery connects here as well. On the other end, we have two wires, a positive and a negative, and this is 12 gauge wire. This is also a 25 amp fuse. This wire right here is a temperature sensor. Because we're using an AGM battery, it right, this regulates to understand how much heat is coming out of the battery so that it doesn't overcharge, especially during summer seasons. Over here is a connection for the solar panel and it has a 20 amp circuit breaker fuse. So right here, this large wire, which is connected to the inverter, we made our own connection because this originally comes with alligator clips, which is not something that we wanted to do. We wanted everything to just be always connected. So we used leftover wire from the DC, basically the large six gauge wire, and we made our own connections from it. On the back of the USB, as well as the 12 uh, volt cigarette lighter, just basic, you know, positive, negatives. Um, and this is, I believe, 18 gauge wire as well. And the kits, they come with their own fuses. So we just left that there. Now this is the most interesting, most important part for, I think almost all builds should have this. This is called a shunt. And what it basically is, is all of the negatives of every component is gonna get connected to one side of this shunt. On the other end of the shunt 
it connects directly to the battery. What this does is it basically registers all of the energy that's going in and out of the battery, and that's how you have a battery monitor, because the battery monitor is connected directly to this shunt. Because you don't want your batteries to completely drain or else you're gonna have it fried. If there's one investment that I would say, you definitely should get some form of a battery monitor. Now from there, let's go into the battery box itself. And this is pretty simple. On the negative terminal, it's just connected to the other end of the shunt. And then all of the positives from every wire is connected to the positive of the battery terminal. And that's basically what our system looks like. To us, it's fairly simple. I mean, you could look online. There's a lot of different videos, different types of setups. Um, but this is going to be working perfectly well for us. We don't need too much. We don't have lights. We don't have a lot of electronics that need to get charged. They're mostly USB operated. So if that's something that you're possibly interested in, then you could kind of take some influence from this. Now we're going to make a video after six months maybe of using this, just kind of talking about all the things that we liked or disliked, what we would change. But this is basically our off-grid energy and we're happy, we're very proud of what we've done. So if you guys like this video, if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up. We are going to be heading off in a couple of days on a USA road trip. So if you guys are interested in that, subscribe. In the next coming videos, we are also going to be putting our rooftop tent as well as installing our 12 volt fridge. So we hope to see you all in the next one. Take care. Bye. We're building the electric, electric, um, the electrical system. Electrical system part. <laughs> oh my God, it's, it's good. It's good. Yeah, we'll keep pushing. Can you pull it? I see that head, I see that head, I see that head. Hopefully it's completely finished. Well, it is going to be completely finished because they're watching a video and we're gonna make sure it's finished. And then what's, what's, and then one's, <laughs> and then what, once, all of this is magically there. <laughs> what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> is that your magic trick? Are you, your magic box? <laughs>